Hello, hello. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Welcome, everybody. Sally, I want to introduce you to the art to art community and thank everybody out there for joining in. You know, what we do here is just uh, explore some of the consistencies between different disciplines of creativity and art like that. So I want to welcome you, Sally. Thank you. And thank you for being, being here on Art to Art. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So um, how you been? I'm okay. I'm interested in what I'm making right now. So that's always nice. Oh, yeah. I'm just struggling trying to find something. So that's been motivating. Right. Some of the stuff that you're working on right, right. now? Yes. So or, that's motivating. Yeah, just being creative. So tell the, so basically, um, tell the people like what you do and just to give them an inside scoop on like your artistry and things like that. Okay. Um, I make large sheets of acrylic paint and I form them into a, a sculpture that's hung traditionally on the wall as you would hang a painting. Um, but the, how I sculpt them is there's a material quality to the painting. And um, I would say that they're most influenced by the modernism, uh, non-representational artwork. Uh, and right now I'm inquiring into um, the concept of desire, you know, like what makes an mm -hmm. image, like why would you, what makes you desire something? And not, not um, necessarily sexual desire, something more fundamental than that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, desire kind of affects everything. Like, I'm right now desiring that I, I sound okay and that I'm clear on what I'm saying and, mm. and that, I'm, that I want you to relate to what I'm talking about. You know, so there's constant flows of that. Mm -hmm. And how to make an object create the desire and I'd actually, I wrote something down for this. Sweet, and I, sweet. <laughs> because Emily, Emily Dickinson just had on one poem, it said, within, re within its reach, though yet not un ungra oh, I can't talk. Within its reach, mm -hmm. though yet ungrasped. And so it mm -hmm. is like there's this quality of, you know, even when I look at this pillar, there's something about it that because it's shiny and it mm -hmm. reflecting the lights in a certain way mm -hmm. that I, it, 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 it's intriguing, but I can't quite um, complete it because I don't know everything that's being reflected in it. So it's, mm. it's still like creates some kind of intrigue. Okay. Um, so that's like where the desire kind of pulls in intrigues and pulls yeah. in. Wow. Okay. So it's like, okay, could I create a painting or an object? that kind of evokes that in people. Hmm. Okay. That's tight. That's tight. The desire, desire is something every, everybody can relate to because, you know, people want, like you said, you got social media with immediate gratification. Right. You know, people want to be appreciated. People want to be, you know, a lot of things. So that's interesting that you put that into an art flow. How did you come up with that? Or like, what's the process? What's your process of coming up with stuff like that? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, you have um, like Agnes Martin, when she did her field paintings, she wanted to paint quiet, you know, like, so there was like an element of like, how do you create the essence of quiet in a painting? Mm. Or um, I remember looking at per year's um, sculpture, which are these very large sculpture. And, mm -hmm. and they were like at the Art Institute, I think it was at the Art Institute, and the rooms were large, and yet they seemed to be too crowded. You know, like, like mm -hmm. within those minimalistic sculptures, you, they kind of pushed outside of their presence. So, like, that was one thing I used to try to play with. Like, how do I have something that, in, rather than it being pictorial and you looking inside of it, mm -hmm. that it actually expands visually to the space around it mm. and so i kind of work that way okay and um and uh and i because i don't work with imagery like representation i don't work with representation mm -hmm. it's um kind of a questions of essence 
like can this have some essence you know mm, creating and, essence and, through yes okay and can it um you know like through a certain um let's see like like kind of an also like standing in between intention and accident which we also constantly live in, you know, we, we're, right, we're right. <laughs> right. You know, like we're constantly trying to determine, like I'm trying to determine what I'm going to say here, but mm-hmm. that's out the, the window. Balance of it. Right, yeah, right. So now I have to be spontaneous and yeah. I'll make them. And, and so there, there's always that dance in life. Yeah. And so like, how do those just human qualities or life qualities, how does that get represented in a, in a, of art and a piece yeah yes. that's dope that's dope i like how you bring the consciousness of that into your in your work like that consciousness the balance between some of these things that are unconscious in the back of our, my mind yes you're free to talk about it and yes. bring it up like even when you were like i'm thinking about what to say right now that's something to be appreciated just i like that i like yes. the flow of that so you roll that into some of those human characteristics and experiences you roll that into your art right and and it's like the process of which i work mm, okay you know, okay like, that's a creative process uh, yes so, so you're limitless with it then <laughs> yeah right i can go anywhere <laughs> right i mean if human experience sure, look um yeah that, that, that's yeah. tight how did you get started in art like you from chicago yes okay um wow that's a Big question. Um, my mother probably had me always appreciated, and she was an illustrator, but she was also like a woman that was raised in the Depression and, and lived in a very confined roles of her era. Mm-hmm. But I, so I had an appreciation of art or what's traditionally art, like your ability to draw something that looks like what you're looking at right Mm -hmm. but um i'm i'm like someone that started high school in the um end of the 60s so it was the hippies and and the time of hope and and lsd and and you know uh all the language seemed to be about experience or how you felt and Mm -hmm. um and also living in question why do I have to do this? Or why can't I know this person? Or why do I, you know, so there was like all these questions and all these rules that we were living by. So that maybe um, was kind of a background. And I remember then taking two art history classes, one from Renaissance to Modernism. Mm -hmm and really seeing the flow of how an image represented or expressed a philosophy in humanism mm-hmm. and humanism and ideas and how that got evolved, you know, like looking at a, a, um, a uh, I can't remember the artist's name, but it was, the, it was um, the first image where it was representing someone sleeping and being within their own consciousness, you know, and that was kind of mm. in the um, prior to the Renaissance, and how just ideas and science and poetry and concepts of what are beautiful got were exploded, mm-hmm. you know. And then I took um, a modern art class, which um, had, you know, ideas important, you know, and and um, you went through the modern era and and mm. how the the viewer was engaged in a different way because like if you even start with the Cezanne where you have the images kind of falling off like that he kind of alters his art so that but he creates that the viewer actually completes the painting mm. by him and so all of a sudden the viewer is an active participant so the art classes that I took, it was kind of life changing for me, mm, and okay. um, and I was kind of a messed up person and and got in a lot of trouble, and it seemed to express um, 
like a way to relate to life that I could adjust to. It sounds like you did a lot of art history study or like you were inspired by your just yes. uh, the info- learning how art unfolds. Yes. Is it something that that you intended to do early? Like, do you feel like you were born an artist or that's something that pulled you into it? Um, I think it's something that pulled me into it. Mm -hmm. I think that I always thought art was, I respected it or liked it. Mm -hmm. But I was pretty messed, I was kind of like (laughs) lost for a long time. So I don't know if I had an intention. And I was also raised at a time that... um, you know, like women's libs just started. Like you were expected to get married. Well, I didn't mm. get married. You weren't, you know, like you were expected to have a certain role. And I didn't fit all those roles. And I didn't really pursue them. Mm. And um, so there, there was a disconnect between the, the rules that I was raised in and whoever I was becoming. And so it took a while for me to um, find my own path. Okay. Yeah. Feeling that. That reminded me of one of the lines I had in the song. Oh, okay. And I was like, uh, you know, I was like, forget these fools. I've never been the type to comply to rules. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's kind of like all of these restrictions, like he's speaking about. Right. You know, you know, coming up where they expected certain things, but you were at a place where. You know, you didn't necessarily sign up for it, and you wasn't really going with that. Right, and 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 what you're saying, you know, forget these fools. It's it's like, oh, this they are not the truth. Right. You know, right. it's like they it, it, like it, it takes a while to get. Oh, it's not the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and 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 it doesn't, and and you know, that's actually good because that means you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and you're, you know. Reacting to life in a more honest way, I think, mm-hmm. rather than a passive. Yeah, exactly, and it's more expansive. Yes. And I was, I was just talking to my nephew, and I was like, you know, in life you want to stay on the o- offense, on uh-huh. the on offense. You know, I'm everybody knows I'm into sports. You into sports at all? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> well, I exercise. You, right, right. I you know, know the rules. Some right, of the rules. Right, okay. right, right. But you know, <laughs> offense, defense. You yes, know what right. I mean? <laughs> so. Is, I like what you said because it's, it's a forward-moving type of mind state. And that's yes. one thing that I love about, I guess, being creative or in right. the creative realm because it gives you that freedom to think, oh, I'm outside the box. I don't necessarily, you challenge a lot of things. Yes. And over yes. time that becomes like, okay, well, anything is possible when you have that mind state. So. Right, and you see a world differently. Right. And I mean, and you've done this, and now we're gonna. I'm gonna make you talk about you. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, and I've had the many, many conversations with you, and I'll be like babbling, and then all of a sudden you will say something that's just very simple, and it it kind of expresses what I've been trying to express in a sentence. You know, like where you just kind of nail it, and mm. the sentence will have like an emotion or an expression in it that makes. It complete, mm. you know, and that's that's a talent. Like that, there's there's like, but that also has to do with probably your discipline and what you do that you can like sum up something. Mm. You know, poetry does that. Where all of a sudden there's something you're not defined, you can't quite grasp inside of you, and then someone you read it, and it's like all of a sudden whatever's going on with you right. becomes available. Right. And um like a full picture all of a sudden. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and that is a wonderful experience. Yeah, that's something that um it's like a phrase for that, like put it in a bar. Put it you know, in a bar? Put it in a bar, like in in, in music. You oh, write it in a bar. bar. Yeah, like music, a, yeah, I'm so, thinking of lifting. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> put it in a bar. Write those words. <laughs> yes. But like but that's um I think I get that from, you reminded me of my pops when I said that, well, where I got that from, because uh-huh. he would say stuff like, all you got to do is be cool. Yeah. And right. I'd be like, right. you know, I be, might be worried about a game or whatever's going on. He'd be like, all yeah. you got to do is be cool. I'd be like, right. that's it. 
and then you can almost feel it. Right. You can right. almost feel it. And yeah. your your I don't know how old your pop is. How old? Is mm, well, he passed away. He passed away now, oh. but um, you know, he's still with us here. You yeah, know what right, I mean? right. And uh, he was well. He was a uh, sixty-four. Okay, yeah. so he's from my generation, which has all of that. Mm. You know, be cool. You know, don't right. hassle me. Right. You know, this is so uptight. Like it has all this language that kind of expresses an, uh, a feeling or an essence or a, you know, so that he can do that. Or yeah. like even you can repeat him. Right, right, it, right. It it's does. a beautiful thing that kind yeah. of transcends. Yes. And that's one thing. Like one thing I noticed about you, you always working on your. Your stuff, like when I come <laughs> coming into your studio, like yo, I got this and I'm working on this, man. I got I this one going, and that's definitely to be appreciated and respected because I know the feeling of it. Yeah, and that's like one of the one of the reasons why I like. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad we got this show available. This is so, um, you know, people, the world of going after something that you can create. Yes, you know what I mean. Right. So bringing like bringing something that wasn't there into the world. It's right right it is and that that kind of brings me to a question i wanted to ask you in terms of like you met people where they say well oh you know i'm i'll leave that up to the creatives i'm not that creative oh you know like what do you think about that why do you think people say that oh that's such a um interesting question you know because um first i think they're mis they're, they're not speaking the truth, you know, because right. they're not knowing what creation, to be creative is. Right. You know, so, so there's a part of me that they're defining it in a way that's very limited. Mm-hmm. You know, and then not to underline, like, being creative and taking the discipline takes a lot of work and education and, and putting yourself into it. Mm-hmm. You know, and... and People put themselves into all kinds of things that they might be creative, but they don't define it in the arts. Right, right. You know, so, As is. Yes. And, but also, they could be undercutting themselves. You know, like, mm-hmm. uh, when I taught, it, it was like people had concepts of themselves, and I was like, you're limiting your concept of what this should be. Mm. You know, and, and, and it's really finding your expression in it. Okay. And and other people, other artists, if you study, they probably have expressed in a way that you relate to. Mm-hmm. You know, but you can't stop there. Then you have to participate in that vocabulary. Right. Get it. Get personal yeah. with it. Like bring it into right. self to a certain. So you taught art. Or- I taught art. I taught art in um, Chicago public schools, and I also taught art in the evenings at a college, and um, that was. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, at a certain point, I just um, realized in my early thirties, I'm not a big salesperson, you know. So not a I, salesperson. I, no. So okay. it, so it supported me for a while, and I thought I really do need health insurance and a retirement, and mm-hmm. so I, in my early thirties, um, got a license to tar- to teach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sweet, sweet. So how does that, um, how did that feed your creativity, like teaching? Um, there's something wonderful about, so I taught at an art school. So there's something wonderful about bringing ideas to to young people and to kids. And, um, and it's also, I think in education, so often they're so busy feeding the kids to pass the test. Mm-hmm. That they don't ask for their interpretations of things and then come from that. So I could teach them art history and then have them create art, but to actually ask them, what do you think of this? What is your initial thought of this painting? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's surprising how intelligent and, and how excited they can be about expressing what they intuitively see in something. Mm. And that's so rarely valued. Right, right. You know, and, and also, it's kind of needed. I mean, I remember I was teaching during um, when Obama was running for president, and, mm. and the poster, um, uh, um, the poster, 
he had, he was always looking out into the future. You know, like he was always like looking kind of above and beyond and into the future. So he had Uh this expression. And I compared that to, oh, I can't remember the name. It was um, a woman in the Dust Bowl. And she's like um, the famous name for painting, about photograph, and I can't remember Uh it. But she's also looking into the future, but hers is not a good future, you Mm -hmm. know? And so it was like we compared, you know, like even though the position, even though the eye level, why do you immediately know that this this person represents hope? This person is communicating Mm -hmm you know something that's that's on its way that's possible Mm -hmm. and this person's not you know and and um and so there was many like looking at portraits and seeing how i think they they compared abe lincoln and a portrait of abe lincoln that am i going on to like that he's like like the most powerful person in the country right right you know and speaking of essence like yes but he's sitting there in a chair like he's just one of you you know like i'm just here and so <laughs> right. yeah, so it's like okay wait a second you gotta analyze this stuff and, right. and that becomes necessary i mean look at the news and the, the tv and mm-hmm. everybody that's trying to have you desired their concept is my word desire right right but, that's, what it is. Um, that's what it is you know they have to learn how to negotiate you know, in this culture that's constantly pulling at them mm. to get something from them. Negotiate. Yes. What's the, what's the negotiation? They, they need to negotiate. I guess maybe negotiate. I like that, though. The, yeah, this, negotiate. Like, 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 well, I guess it's, it's, they have to negotiate all the imagery that's going at, coming at them, all the things that are, people are requesting of them, mm-hmm. all the things, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I mean, I think going back to your line where you're saying these fools, like all of a sudden you have to go, wait a second, I'm not the puppet on the string for all of right, this. Right, right, you right. Know, so that's, yeah. I, you know, you are using me. You are manipulating, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important because, yeah. um, like you said, a puppet on a string, you you not in control. And no. sometimes those strings are invis- invisible when you think about TV, social media, yeah. even sometimes your environment of friends. Yes. You know what I mean? So I like that. I like how you use negotiation because it's like, okay, where am I according to the things around me and where do I want to be? Yes. And how do I know right. when I'm off track or on track? Right. Yeah. So that's a yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah, that's true. And, and how, how do I, like when you're negotiating, I guess it's all the things coming at you. Like, you you have to say, I, this is where I'm going to listen. Mm-hmm. This is, like, with friends. Mm-hmm. These are the, I mean, I remember having friends that I was like, oh, maybe they weren't so great. You know, like, right, they really right, weren't yeah. friends, mm-hmm. you know? But, yeah. yeah, not maybe not real friends. And that's, that's a negotiation right there, too. That's an um, unfoldment in terms of discernment. Mm-hmm. You know, luckily, like, I think that being an artist, one thing I'm grateful for is, like, you can create something, whether it's writing. I'm not, I haven't explored into the, the drawing and like visual, mm-hmm. but you get answers. You, oh. spoke, you spoke about truth, you know, like right. people who say they're not creative, they really don't know the truth. But my, my uh, concept is that you get answers from the thing you create. Yes. You can get true answers like a mirror or if you write down a pressing issue, right. like, okay, it provides some clarity. Right, it, it has some completion in it. Yeah. And you can always tell when it's not quite complete. You know, like when right. you write something down or you something and you're like, oh, wait a second, this is a little tweaking. Right. Because it hasn't settled into that truth or that completion or that reflecting back what you're trying to communicate. Right. It allows yeah. you to be able to see your feelings in a certain yeah. way. Right. And the essence. I like I like the essence of things because in today's world, as you know, it seems like the essence is not valued to me. I no, feel. I don't. What do you think? <laughs> Just, today's world is kind of really crazy. Um, 
it, it's kind of like a sports game in today's world. You know, uh, it's like everybody's like like on a team fighting, and it seems like everybody's asking you um, to be angry and to oppose a certain team. You know, mm, and and right, so, right. Um, and and I think I mean this is just my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. like we'll talk about politics for a minute, but just like um, some people like are like believe in the politician like to the point where it's like they're they're idolizing them because they see everything they do is right mm-hmm. you know it's kind of like they're making them a god right you know and i'm like yeah if you're making if you're not if you're not seeing goods and bads you know like good decisions and bad decisions and conflicts and everything mm-hmm. then you are not thinking you're right. not paying attention you're not um so i i think um today's world cory booker i think when he mm-hmm. when the supreme court justice was um the new supreme court justice which i forgot her name oh, she's uh, jackson uh, jackson yes yeah. you know he said and i loved it he he was like this is a monumental moment i am not gonna let this feel my joy and uh-huh. at that point it was like yeah all the noise just kind of guts you and makes you like it takes away something from you mm. and and he was like i'm not gonna do this this is a joyous moment the mon- monumental moment mm-hmm. and i'm standing there and, and he was speaking on he was speaking about her being passed as the supreme court right, justice right. you know after all of the you know nasty things that were going on right, in the questioning were... and it's like oh that's someplace i can stand okay you know, like I can stand in that, you know, and, right. and, um, and, and I can push away all From the that. nasty stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, I could go get in there and be angry and, and do all of that, but it's like, oh no, I'm with him. This, mm. I'm not going to let them steal this joy for me. This is kind of a wonderful thing right. that's happening. Right. Yeah. That's important because there's so many things yeah. that people want to tear Yes, tear they, down. It's they like really the, do. Yeah, it's like the society for some reason. Like I like how you use that sports analogy, is against the next team or next yes. person when it. So it's a lot of devices and division and things. Right. That's what it really that, that gets on my nerve. Like sometimes you can have a conversation and it is it's weird because you can't create that team aspect that easily anymore. No, you can't. It's like I've got my position and right. my like, you know, and or I'm seeing you as other. And um, I was, yeah, that I mean, you have to be uncom- You have to be willing to be uncomfortable and to be around people mm-hmm. that don't think about you that maybe I mean, you know, that don't that aren't like you. I mean, and if you aren't willing to be uncomfortable. Then you can, you know, go home in your box. Right. And, and mm. Is that something that you naturally develop, or is that something you work on, like that that part of getting used to being uncomfortable? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, maybe it was uncomfortable, <laughs> so it was a natural <laughs> state. Right. 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 Okay. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it was. I think inside of the time I was. No, we were very naive, but this thing of like, oh, life could be different. And the questioning. And just um, not wanting to be in, limited to, you know, like this thing Gosh. life my parents were in, which mm-hmm. I didn't really like or address very well. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to, like, be willing to go into areas that are uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. I mean, we'll you know, I, and I think ways. because I got in so much trouble, um, I was like in all kinds of environments that um, were completely different than the culture I raised, raised in. Oh, okay. You know, oh, okay. I, I, I got sent to a boarding school. It was 1% white. You know, uh, okay. <laughs> you know? so right. I was so. like, but, you know, we were all girls and we were like, okay, we're all in trouble. <laughs> So, right. so there was something connecting. <laughs> right. So it was know? like the, the, the rebelism came out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Okay. So it was just, and I mean, but some of them, I mean, the, the, the schools that I taught in, it was um, 96% 
free lunch, like 2% white. Mm -hmm. And it was so rich for me as far as being included in people's families and being part of people's lives that weren't mine, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it was not my culture and it was like rich it makes life rich mm, you know and rich, huh? it, yeah right that's real richness it, yeah that's real richness you know like if you can you can sit down and all it's and it's not like about knowing it it has a certain essence to it a certain mm-hmm. feeling to it that when you like are around an environment enough it's kind of like you can almost you open up to something that you experience initially right right yeah that's that's important i think that's something that i would like to everybody y'all hear that (laughs) (laughs) y'all hear that you know don't be afraid to step out and be uncomfortable y'all could leave a comment and talk about that because art to art that's why we're here together just to kind of as we learn about what we do right and art and being creative is so continuous it's all about some of the feedback. A lot of times we get in our own head and give ourselves feedback. But once you put yourself out there, right. it's like making a song or doing a piece of art. It's like, oh, I like it. But then if somebody say, well, you missed the spot. Like, what? <laughs> Wait, who are you talking to? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, hold on. Get out of here. You know what I mean? But it's part of the game, though. It is part of the game. And, and it's part of, like, letting go and seeing if you can see. It's, that's a weird thing. Like, where you're saying, okay, you're, you're, you're showing having someone listen to something you create Mm -hmm. it it's like in one way you need someone that um has a similar ear so they can actually see what you're creating Mm -hmm. or hear what you're creating right absolutely and then that person when they say oh this moment isn't working right you can then all of a sudden start seeing it through their eyes and maybe or hearing it through their eyes right and seeing what's happening there yeah. Versus someone that might not hear what, mm-hmm. you know, so it's an interesting, it's, a, yeah. it's an interesting dance. Yeah. It's an interesting dance. It is yeah. because people gravitate to different things, but then they say art is universal and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So I'm just right. examining some of the things like the desire and the, right. the, the essence. Uh, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. So, I took this course once. It was a year course. It was called, I don't know what, growth and development or something. But one of the things they talked about was there's certain areas in your life that you are just with whatever you're doing. Like okay. you're with music. Like all of a sudden, you're, there, there's time disappears that you are present to it. It's almost like you for that moment, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And everybody probably has those if they try to convo- cultivate something. The mistake that we make is where my area might be of growth and develop and creativity mm-hmm. might be just noise to you. Mm-hmm. You know, where you are not, you know, it's not, it doesn't do that. You know, and, and I think that there's certain things that bridge a gap between a lot of it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Where it does, like yeah, all of a sudden, it I mean, fills in some of the blanks. Yeah, or that people can't hear it, but as it grows in time, they become accustomed to it, and then they become part of it too. Right, right. But it's not. Um, I mean, I had this friend. She was like making antique dolls. I mean, she was selling them for a fortune. She just did this amazing job. I was like, it's noise to me. I am not into dolls. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. right. No, that ain't my cup not. of tea. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right. so it's like, <laughs> right. but I could just get, like, if I stayed around, I would see that she's one of the better. Of the uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh, okay, right. So that made me think about different disciplines and creativity. Mm-hmm. Is there something that, um, outside of, like, visual arts and the things that you create that you wanted to try or have tried, um, uh, um. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, there's certain things I've loved, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's certain things that, um, a sound or a, a bit of poetry or, or some people that I, I have this one friend and he's a poet and, and an artist, a visual artist and, um, mm-hmm. and an author and he can play in the visual world and the 
poetic world like marry them and it I can love that. Mm, okay. But it's not necessarily my talent. Right, right. I feel it, but yeah. you could you can appreciate it from for what it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great and, thing too right there because that's how I feel about visual. You know, visual art like I don't know. I won't say I can't do it, but it's not it doesn't draw me. It doesn't draw you. That's, yeah, it doesn't really draw me into it. It's a different type of patience, you yes. know. But uh, so I really appreciate when people come up. Like your, your billows, it's like, how did you think of that? And <laughs> right. how did where is it? Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the amazing things about it because especially when you don't aren't necessarily in that flow of creativity. Right. It's like, because I remember we had the uh, gallery down on the third floor and you introduced the, the billows. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, like, it's comfort, but it's art. So right. that was one marriage right there. Yes. So I was like, okay. Right. And that just that you live in the question, uh, you know, and is an interesting thing. You know, like, like I can be like sound, like when you are creating, you know, music and, and there's different sounds. It's like, what is it that intrigues me about something? Mm -hmm. You know, and then, or that I'm not quite comfortable with, but I'm still interested in. You right. know, like, and okay. that you sit in the question of exposing yourself to it and what happens. Okay, okay. You know? Yeah, so that speaks to the courage of that uncomfortability. Yes. But it's that entry, you said, it's like, live in the question, sit in the question. Yeah, sit in the question. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people, that's not, let me think, let me think. Has that been something that I was naturally drawn to? Cause I I really like that, and I I, I try to stay open to that. Mm -hmm. I think I attribute that to my my sister. She showed me a lot of things mm -hmm. outside of my environment. I was mm -hmm. raised in Detroit, you know, mm -hmm. so it was ninety five percent black people. Yeah. Like we had like one in all of my my whole school career. Mm -hmm. I probably had three white yes. people in my schools. Yeah. So you know that was cool. It wasn't any you know racial tension or anything. Mm -hmm. Right. But I knew just from her exposing me to different readings and different things that she taught herself languages, it made me expand and want to like explore other things. To see different worlds. To see different worlds. Like, okay, it's, it's like, I remember one specific time we were in an encyclopedia and we're like, yo, this, this well is like 300 feet long. And we actually had a ruler and like, she was like, Silk, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be across the street right there. And I just, that sticks out in my mind because it made me think about the, the world, the oceans, yes. and that expandability. So living in the question, I think that's a great right. gift to be able to develop or to have people like right. you just to remind people of that. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful well, thing. Well, and it, and it is uncomfortable. I mean, it's yeah. good, you know, like when you, right. you it's kind of intriguing like when you say oh i this that's how far that is and then they're like so how big how big is the ocean and how you know like you get right. in those questions which is exciting you know because yeah. you're like all of a sudden opening up to this whole mind spin that's different that's different and it's challenging it's very challenging i you know this is kind of a different i was um working with a Rohingya Burmese family and they uh -huh. were and they were um, refugees here and it, it's a culture that um, they're, they're, there's massive graves and they're killing them and they're coming here so mm. now these people this family mm -hmm. there's no written language none so when I started working with the kids mm -hmm. there was no s relationship to like scribbling on paper now you think about kids scribbling right you know, you know in our you know it's one they get into scribbling you right know? there was no relationship to putting a mark anywhere what yeah so you can imagine how like the world that they're in it's a completely different world than yeah. mine <laughs> you yeah, know I mean. you're right and then it was a very patriarchal society so the women like the marriage is arranged at 14 and they are the property and and mm. so and covered completely covered and so i had a like it was uncomfortable it was like okay and i had to like eat a lot of my ideas because mm. um um 
you know, like the husband, I was like, what do you mean you're talking about her? You know, I'm like, right. like, wait a second. This is, you know, right. we don't treat women this way. Right. But, you know, and, but then it was like, oh, she like is happy here. He's a good father. Mm. Do you know, I mean, like I had to get off my own personal attitude mm-hmm. okay. to, to serve them, to help them adjust to this culture. Right. To, you know, and um, it's uncomfortable. And and I'm like still think well I'm right but not, not really right. you know not you know it's not um, you know like you have to think what well what do you believe and I'm like oh they're here with us we're all here together you know right. and and uh, you know she's getting exposed to a woman that can wear pants and drive right and go yeah. outside it's and, a whole you know, different right. display right. yes of life yes right and so that's wild no, yeah that's, it was that's, wild that's wild that's what we need to pay attention to like being closed off and i had this one idea it was called fresh out the box so we probably we probably put that on you know soon um it's gonna be like a segment, like this is fresh out the box. You know okay. what I'm saying? So okay. it's, it's like one of those voila moments or boom boom, like just an idea of like re- recognizing when you're in the box and when oh, you're when you're outside out of it. the box. You know what I mean? Right. Where you are. So yeah, and you and that the box is your own creation, right? You know, and it was right. like, oh my goodness, right. I created this box. Right, right. Yeah, I'd be like Sally, you, you in the box, baby? You got yeah, it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> and my right. box closes it right, on me. Right. <laughs> I got no like, like, let, let me hop. Well, how can I hop up out of this bug? Right. Like, look, we need to get out of the box. Right. So, and you can, yeah. and sometimes you can hear like thoughts that you go on. Yeah. And, and a lot of times. Stuck and you realize I'm in the box. Yeah. I love that yeah. phrase. Yeah. I'm in the box. I'm, a, I'm in the box. And yeah. I'm like making this box really strong by repeating these thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially, and that's one of the, I won't say drawback, but that's one of the experiences of, of spending time with your creativity because mm-hmm. it can focus you in and you might get closed off or you right. might not even display some of the stuff you created. Yes. And that's in the box. I know. And I am in the box. Right. Me too. I can't, I can't front. I can't front. It yeah. kind of come with the territory. Yes. Because you way. have to kind of create a safe box. Right, right, right. And then get out of the box. Yeah. I love that phrase. So I'm going to, it's so true. Right. It's right. so yeah true that's where the courage come in as far as putting stuff on display enter into uh right. contests galleries um yes. different displays it's like you know what i'm saying right like Hopping i'm exposing myself yes right. i am putting myself out here and the, yeah I, right yeah the more you do that the more comfortable and you're, you're really looking for your audience you know like looking yeah. to see who can right. hear you wow. looking to see who can see you yeah and and not Paying attention to the not your audience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're willing to risk being uncomfortable to find comfort in a way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Or connection. Is, connection. Connection. Yeah. Connection. Yeah. Connection. Connection. Connection, which is one of the greatest things. Yeah. Relating to people. I mean, we right. are human. Right. You know what I mean? We want to be like, okay, yeah, oh where you got that? Yes. You know? <laughs> like, because it makes life joyful yeah it makes life joyful. or richer or deeper or whatever transformational you know all right. of those things come from connection yeah yeah exciting yeah. exciting it's yeah. interesting yeah, it's very interesting but i i have ultimately this belief that you have something to contribute and you belong and right. and your pain you and it was very difficult to get like some of the students and people in general like the way they're acting, which is difficult to be around, is in direct response to the life that they're living, in the situation they're in. Mm. You know, mm. so it's like, how do you give someone the peace so they could maybe choose a little different? Okay. You know, okay. Like, okay. You know, I'm rocking like, with yeah, that. So it's yeah. a little different, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. That reminds me of like, you know, the way you know, in in self uh, study or whatever. Uh huh. You through art, you find out a lot about yourself. Oh and yeah. 
just like not being understood mm-hmm. is a is a is a huge thing because people may not know where you're coming from. No, they don't. But the, the most healing thing is to be seen. You know, mm. like when you uh, can, you know, when mm. you can really, somebody sees you clearly. Right, right. There's somewhat healing. Yeah, it's a unification. Yeah. yeah. It's right. unification. It's like when you have a scar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fresh off the box. <laughs> like, yeah. like we, this. And then when you, you know, when the cut come together, it's like a healing because you get the, the elements or the, Healing factors was maybe that environment, right? To bring it together. And yes, there's the growth. There's the growth right there. Yeah, yeah, there's the growth. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, I like to think about some of those things because so just taking it back to the essence of why we do what we do, who we're right. trying to influence, not knowing right. who we're going to influence. Um, the freedom. Yeah. To be creative. Yes. The challenge of being creative and then uh, choosing a little different. Yeah. And sometimes the essence is just, as you said, getting, um, not being with these fools. You know, right. even the fools that I'm making myself because I believe them. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right, right. Like to yeah. get past that so that you can be more of your essence. So that you and have that be more present. Right, right, yeah. More of your essence and express that. Yeah. Express that. So, um, do you have, do you mostly work independently with your art or do you collaborate or is it more um, just? I, I have a group of people that I discuss art with. And, okay. And, and, I've, and um, I had a group of people that we met for decades. Now everybody's moved. Everybody was at different success rates or different committee. You know, like um, um, some people were making a living off their art. Some people were professors. Some, you know, like just a whole group of people. Mm-hmm. And we would fight, show, and we would discuss our art. And we did that for years. So that kind of collaboration I do, or I'm I'm showing with a group of people at um, Lewis University. And so we okay. collaborated in a concept, mm. you know, and, 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 and saw where our work kind of interrelates in a concept. Okay. Or expresses Sweet. a concept in a different way. Right. So, um, yeah, we did this before, and it was, um, the last one was canned chance, like in a can, and chance, okay. which was uh, Salvador Dali, one of Salvador Dali's thing, because he would deal with chance and randomness. Time. Mm, okay. So, um, some of the artists that you refer to or uh, mm-hmm. influences, that's who are some of like the the top ones? If you, oh my goodness. Oh, I think I fall in love all the time, you know. But um, I, I, I guess. In modern art, I can't not have um, uh, Duchamp because Duchamp mm. basically put the idea, you know, the ideas first. Like okay. Co- you know, so he, he brought it fully from an aesthetic experience to an idea experience. Duchamp. Yeah. Okay. And, but then mine are purely an aesthetic experience. You know, uh-huh. it, you know, where the idea is the, the evolution of paint, what can paint in and of itself express. Mm. You know, so there's a whole, I, I remember I did this, um, I don't know if I could do this with paint, but it, with marks, which like, just look at marks. Mm. I have marks that were made by tools, but you could see the tools because they were primitive. Mm. And then as people went on, you know, they would make statues and, and there was no evidence of marks. So you had like marble that looked like skin. There was like no, uh, you know, like it, it just like there was no evidence of what was made. And then you have like, um, it goes on and on. And then you have um, Van Gogh where he uses the mark to like radiate the light. So he's using the mark to experience what he's making. 
mm. you know, by rotate, you know, and now every cartoon has these, you know, like around a light bulb, they have the mark that you know it's shiny. Right. You know, right, like, right, but right. he was Certain the first. Okay. Yeah, he was okay. the first to ever do that, to create a mark that, like, represented the feeling of it, wow. the experience okay. of it. Okay, right. <laughs> and, um, it's so, like, ba- like Batman with the boom, pow. Yeah, right, right. Those, that's like, too shy. I mean, you wouldn't think that that's, that's Van Gogh. Right, like, <laughs> right, right you know, okay, right? okay, um, right. But then you go to, like, there's one now, Sai Twomley, who, um, he brings poetry, but he, he has, like, scribbles all over, you know? Uh-huh. Like, so the mark has, like, made this evolution from trying to be invisible to representing something to just a scribble is something worth looking at. Right. And why is that? So right. I right. am in that thing of painting, you know, where mm. it's like you have the non-representational artists that, that do the great big field paintings or the Rothko mm-hmm. that has an atmospheric field painting. And then, you know, it expands, you know, throughout history. Mm. And then, so I'm like, sure if I can that conversation. Right, right, right. So, okay. Like, can I contribute? Yeah, 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 that's dope. That's dope. So, <laughs> that's that's one of the questions. So that that how's that that keeps you pushing? That keeps and, me, and, yes. And yeah. and and like, I mean, I don't know about you with making music, but I'm like, oh wow, look at this. Could I expand this into something that's interesting? Like, right. you, you know, like, can yeah. I have it grow? Have yeah. it grow into something more than just what it is. Yeah. When I think about making music. I think about how you can paint a picture with words. Yeah, and then you have, there's a thing in art which is subject matter, form, and content. Uh So with art, it's like the subject matter is the picture, what you draw. Mm -hmm. The form is how you draw it. Right. And the Uh content is what those two things relate to. Uh So you have words and sound. Right. And and, and how those intermingle with each other gives mm-hmm. the experience and the content of what it is. Right, give the experience and the content. Yeah, the context, the content, you know, like so, um, it's, it's like if you're saying something pleasant, but you have like a, a kind of violent sound, mm-hmm. then it gives you this like anxiety in you. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. like they're not mixed. You can create different, yeah, different beautiful classes. Yeah, different relationships right there. Yeah, yeah. One thing about uh, with, with music and art in general is like to me, it just seems so much easier. Like creativity <laughs> for me, it makes life easier. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Like, why is that? It's because sometimes you could just put it out there, mm-hmm. get it off your chest, or get it off your mind. This is how I look at it. Uh huh. Right. You know what I mean? Just look at that. Right. Look it's like, that. I'm putting it out here. I'm putting it out there. Like, if you want to talk about it, I'll talk about it. But I'm talking about it right here. Right. So it's kind of, it's a release. Yes. And then it kind of gets the pressure off of you. Yes. And and it has it, a it, life of its own. Yeah. And then people look into it. Like, right. yo, if you want to know, check out one of my hookups. Right. And then it has a life of its own. Right. And, and it's right. kind of like it's yeah. disconnected from yeah. you. Yeah. It becomes its own life. It which does. that's interesting. Yeah, you know, that's that's it, very it, interesting. It, yeah. I love when that happens. Yes. So like you could create something and sure it's having like it makes me think about this. Yes. And you may have not even no, fathomed it, that part of it. No, and it actually might expand what you created to yourself. You right. know? But right. it's that's I love where it's like because I'm not like someone like, okay, I made this, you know. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, be me, here we go. Right, 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 right. I'm like, I want it in the world. It's like, it, it has its own life. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Right. So it just add different elements to growth, the growth yeah. of the world in a way. Yeah. yeah. I'm feeling that, I'm feeling that. It made me think of, in my experience, how I discovered creativity was just trying things. Like, my mom's got me into sports just uh-huh. to kind of keep me some type of discipline. Um, she's like, you know, you're going to try something. Mm-hmm. And so what I learned from that is, like, all of these ideas of creativity are in the air. Yeah. And so it's like, so, so speaking to your point of, like, when you create something, it, it doesn't belong to you. It just flowed through you. Yes. And it's like you're a filter. Yes. So everybody, once we just kind of unleash our antenna, so to speak, and stay mm-hmm. open to it. Yes. Whether it's through education. Right. 
or our different circumstances that we want to grow from. So yes. it's a it's this growth mentality I, that can bring I like you. that that it kind of goes through you. Like it's like you're open here. Yeah. And somewhere it kind of goes through you and it's gone. I mean, and you right. even look at science. Like, I don't know if this is going to be a good analogy, but like penicillin, you know, like it's come from moldy bread. Mm -hmm. You know, like right. that's always been there. Moldy bread has always been there <laughs> right. you know, for right. thousands of years or uh. whatever. But it was like all of a sudden someone saw something through their discipline that created something. Right. And I mean, it's very more complex than that mm -hmm. but then it takes a life of its own and it gets altered and manipulated and it's right. in the world and and that experience whether it's like life changing like penicillin or um just like a conversation like we're having a conversation when we leave here we're a little different right right you know definitely. like it's like it's a little it's created something you know, I don't know what, yeah. but it's like, it's, it's like all interactions are that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you have to be able to appreciate them. You have to be able to appreciate them. Yeah, that's... Hard to be present. Yeah, it's hard to be present. It's hard yeah. to be present. That's like you said, if you're not present, you end up on the public stream. You know I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> or you end up in this conversation, like all through this conversation. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm totally with you. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, oh, I'm a little self-conscious, so I'm all with me, <laughs> you right, know? Right. And it's like back and forth, like how present can we be? Oh, uh, you know, uh, right, right, right. But maybe that that consciousness, I, I think that's a certain presence in itself. Yes. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, okay. right, please, Sally. Says this. I like these kind <laughs> of conversations. I'm glad we're doing it. Um, I'm thinking about this concept that they're writing. It's called selfology. Selfology. Yeah. Okay. It's called selfology. Uh huh. And it's basically being conscious of how your environment affects you. Yes. And what what decisions it makes you make, or some of the things we kind of just right. just spoke about. So I think what you just said in terms of like it's a little self conscious, mm -hmm. but that's a good thing if you can be okay with knowing it. Yes recognizing yes. like so you don't have to play it off you know not playing it off like trying to act cool but if you right. wanted to you could i'm sure you know we both have yes right and so you kind of said two things there's one thing is like um noticing your environment and how it affects you and mm -hmm. how it actually like you respond to it and it makes you into something maybe you want to or you don't and if you don't do what you're talking about like oh, I'm a little self-conscious. Right. You know, like if I'm with all these people that are really, that are judgmental, mm -hmm. and I go, okay, I'm responding to this by being self-conscious. Yeah. And yeah. I have, then it's like I'm just a reaction. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. a reaction. Yes. Right. And so, right. but I really do believe what you're talking about as far as your environment you. It, yeah, because it, it, it creates you in some way. It can create you in certain ways. You want to be conscious of it. Yes. So it's like when it when the heat is on, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> <You got it. laughs> right. You still want to be able to at least be like, okay, well, I can stand this for a couple of more minutes, but right. I might want to get out, or I'm, I might challenge myself. I can handle this. You know what I mean? Right. Just that understanding of self. Yes. In that environment, but you have to, you know understand self you do have to understand self and and you have yes and and also kind of um not think it's all you mm. do you know i mean i'm, I'm just thinking like mm -hmm. one course working where i did it was very political and and sometimes really hard <laughs> mm -hmm. and all of a sudden all the mean people left and i went oh like five people left, you know, okay. my principal who I was fighting with constantly, right. you know, like the, the end, one of the engineers, so just like, they all just got up and left. And I went, oh, it was them, not me. I uh, was just responding to all of this hostility. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's a good learning system right there. Right. To be able to realize something like that. Because. 
in any circumstance, we can go on and on without realizing a breakthrough like that. Right, and thinking that it's all my responsibility rather than I'm with really icky people that are mean. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of pressure. That have power over me. Yeah, you know, right. That's yeah. what it is. That's what it is. So reaching inside and kind of having accessing to be okay. That. Yeah. yeah, having to be okay. Yeah, that's dope. So um, that made me think about like today's modern atmosphere, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you got men, you got women, you got all different types of rules and you know, judgments. What I'm interested to know, like your view as as a woman mm -hmm. in the world of creativity, and like, what's the feeling behind? Being a woman in the art, yeah, in the like in in what you're pushing forward, and what's the pushback, and what's your intentions? As far as a woman, um, oh gosh, that's a big question because it's the strange time politically, you know, with this Roe versus Wade, right, and, and, stuff like and, that, and um, I think uh, you know m my artwork is comes from a really dominant white male. You know, the, all the um, abstract artists, except for Agnes Martin, was, was all that. But my work, because it kind of reflects material, you know, it is definitely more associated with the female. So it's kind of a play in that and, and a tweak, tweak they put it, you know, mm -hmm. at that, you know, a little poke at it. Uh -huh. um, and I did do some paintings where it was kind of, little mockery of it you know like i'll make a billow out of this particular artist art you know okay, so okay so i have a playfulness about that mm -hmm. about being a woman though is a more complex situation because and i think this happens with men also i was listening to a lecture like and and actually it's kind of interesting how gender is being questioned in so many different ways right you know is that there's this, like how we perceive each other or the category of male or male is very limited and it's kind of being challenged mm -hmm. in a way. And um, I don't know, you see, you know, political figures that are female and you know they're being judged in a way because they're female, that, that, that it's like an unaccepted or a dislike that type of woman oh right you know right, right? Those, yes that you can't really even see them traditional type of and you don't even know that but then men have the same thing where they have a very confined roles that they're being yeah. judged from yeah and and emotionally you know all kinds of things and um and so i think it's a really interesting time with this this um you know i have a friend that i i don't know if her son's gonna be uh, um, you know, fluid, I guess that's the word fluid, mm -hmm. you know, but th there's like, like pushing the boundaries of that, those categories, which is really kind of interesting to me, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, and I was fortunate enough that I was born a female and I'm comfortable being a female, you right, know, like right. that, that was like lucky, mm -hmm. you know, um, but. I'm also living in a you know, pretty confined society, but not as confined as some others, you know? So, <laughs> right, so. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting how different gen, gender, is it? <laughs> what do they call that environment? Gender, uh, not discrimination, but just gender identification. Yes, identification. <laughs> yeah, just gender yeah. identification. It's weird because you have to still be who you are. Yeah. But then you got have a lot of um, forces as far as media that may pull you outside of who you really are. Right. So the reason why I'm saying that is because we draw back to knowledge itself. You know, yes. we, we don't want to. One thing I'm leery about is like how things can influence you to try something that you're not, not even, even not even really interested in. No. I mean, if you do try, just try it from self. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? And yes. stuff like that. And we play with self in the wrong way. I, I, I mean, we're always being pulled because we're such a commercial um, 
environment. Right. You know, like right. It's, it's like they're all selling us the politicians, the commercials, the sh- gym shoes, everything's yeah. trying to get us to desire them. Exactly. But th- th- we don't play with the self of like, okay, for like a week, I'm just going to say no to everything. You mm-hmm. know, like just like play with, um, like, just like having the opportunity to try to express yourself in a different way. Right. And right. see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, and that's, that's interesting because that's a little, I find that hard as a man sometimes. I'm sure. Because you got to be a certain way. And that's, that's, I mean, it's a little easier now because, you know, people learn more, but it's still, it's still a little bit challenging to, it's very things. challenging. Yeah. You're like this tall young man. I mean, there's right. just like you're walking yeah. in yeah. and you're like, no question, there's a male, you know? Right, like, right, you know? right, right, right. It's not like a, you know, and so it's like you walk in and like everybody you address make right, assumptions. Makes these, these yeah, things. Right. And then even inside self, I want to be able to break some of those uh, stereotypes in my, right. in my own head. But at the same time, I want to make sure it's not that it's from self, right. not for as a, oh, this is how it should right. be, or this is how it should, you know. Yeah, so that's it's a not a political right statement. Yeah. It's play. Right. You're like going for, I want to be able to play. Yeah, yeah, just be yeah, a, yeah. a natural development. Right. You know what I mean? A natural development. So that, I think that, like, as a man, especially a black man, like, it seems it's like we don't uh, get enough encouragement Mm -hmm. to play with the different aspects of who we are yeah yeah, different aspects of humanity yeah right are you being human i mean being human being human yeah Yeah. right so i want to i want us to you know use this art and like that's one of the greatest thing i mean everybody human humans have come a long way of course we know that but at the same time we have so much development but it's yeah, you can feel it, can't yeah, you? You can yeah. kind of like, like that's the interesting thing about the time. It's like you can kind of feel right. it, you know. Yeah, all you of can. all of this um, questioning and, and gender identity and and just like all of this, it, it's the roles that we play, right? The races, the different races that are existing and yeah. fighting and arguing and, and and doing everything. But it, it's like part of it is we can feel the confinement, right? Right. You right, can. Right. I mean, you can just. Like, um, being older, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, I, it's like you move through it. Right. You know, and um, it's an interesting question. Like, how do I stay true to myself, but yet push that boundary? Right. That's the key. And, yeah, and not do it for something else. Right. Do it, do it for your death. <laughs> yeah, right, right there you go <laughs> yeah, dude, but yeah, that's what uh that's, shout out to, to my cousin twow caj <laughs> what up good he had this uh it's called dr dilliff you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. i can't i'm not gonna mangle this uh um impersonation though but it was a character he created and that was his phrase like if you're gonna do it do it for yourself you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> i love that it's funny See, I, no i couldn't say that do it for yourself. <laughs> no it's uh it's been a great conversation though it's been mm-hmm. a great conversation. And um, if you want to, like, tell the people about what you're working on and, oh. um, you know, the, um, shout out some people or whatever. Well, my name is Sally Havlis, H-A-V-L-I-S, and you could go on my website, which is sallyhavlis.com. And um, I'm working now with a more metallic um, work. Mm-hmm. and um, And I'm inquiring which i think i did about desire but most mainly i'm interested in the dance between painting and object sculpture and traditional painting you know what can painting communicate and um you know take a look read the statement what you know? I'm, uh, <laughs> explore <laughs> yeah yeah thank you so much oh, Sally, you're for welcome yeah, it's been fun, you know i'm, yeah, I'm glad nice. everybody got to meet you and um thank we you. follow up and you know y'all leave some comments send a shout out say, tell us what y'all think <laughs> right and um because we're trying to be developing this art community it's a beautiful thing and uh, yes. it's been a pleasure thank you talking for doing to this you. this is so interesting no, it's I'm, my I'm, pleasure i'm like I'm, where do you uh, where do you listen to these because oh this is going to be on um so i have to write this down Okay, Cre- <laughs> Creative Decisions is my uh, YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. 
And this segment is Art to Art. Okay. Oh, that's so interesting. And okay, because I know you've interviewed some other people in the building. Mm-hmm. You know, after we had this collection, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, that was Sally. She was working on her stuff, you know. Right. Get to know each other. and It's so interesting, yeah. Because yeah, so. we're all in this huge building, and we never talk because we're all in our right, studios. Right, right, right. So that's a beautiful thing. So. Yeah. So thank that's you once nice. again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks Bye. for joining. All right, to art. See y'all next time. <laughs> <Yes>. Peace. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent.